it turns the system into everything open source has to offer. So that's another point to these systems is to, you know, they're kind of, you know, the industry says they systems like this don't exist, that you can't just sit in front of a Linux system that you buy and use it like it's some um, Mac or Windows system and have everything work and be able to sit and actually be productive with it. Like the, the FUD on that is always been that it's, you know, so difficult to set up and like, it's so hard to learn and, and the, uh, the alternatives that it offers are so far behind that they, they're unusable. And, you know, when people start sitting in front of these things and they start doing what they're trying to do, because that's what, it, you know, creating, being creative and using a tool is, can you do what you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. They'll find that they can pretty much do whatever they need to do. And if they're honest about them, about the actual trade-offs they make to have it be more familiar, um, I don't, I don't really think the, the alternatives to free and open source hold any water because you're getting, you're giving up a lot of autonomy you know, on so many levels to have that um, slight ease of use or familiarity. That, yeah, you know, advantage. One of the important things with what the ghost kind of brand means, and one of the core tenets of any device that I add ghost to, you know, that basically means the device is not able to be out of band managed. That means that someone using out of band management software can't hijack your system through the any type of management interface to do malicious things. Um, now the ghost phones, as soon as you get on a network and as soon as you enable that modem, there is management technology built into that and there's no way around that if you want access to the mobile network. But as far as all the other devices with the laptops, the single board computers, the routers, you know, and everything that is built on top of the single board computers, mm -hmm. um, those all are completely lacking of any type of remote management, remote out of band management interface software that can affect them. So there is an entire category of like God level own your system attacks that these systems just don't respond to at all. <laughs> So that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely time. It's definitely time. Um, and uh, and even though like uh, um, I'm thankful that this computer, this laptop's lasted this long. It's this 2013. It's a stupid Windows machine, but um, I can only imagine. Um, like I, I've I've noticed all the advantages from switching over to the Ghost Phone after you know just after getting used to it for a little while. I think it'll be a little more to get used to um, with the content creation laptop. But at the same time, I mean, the uh, the fact like. It, this, that laptop's going to be so much faster than this piece of shit I've been using for, for so long. Like, I already know that. Um, the ghost pad, that the, the first ghost pad I have of yours, is still faster than this one. So um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that's going to be the case. And, yeah, after I get used to it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a thousand times better. Um, just got to do, just gotta do a little work with, with bearing with the inconvenience. Um, and it's, as, uh, it's far worthwhile, though, open source and owning your shit um, and not having a bunch of bloatware to turn on right when you turn on the machine um i can i can only imagine it's probably probably pretty incredible i'll find out here soon well i mean that's you know kind of the rhetoric that i have a hard time coming up with because of you know the free software movement is you know freeze and freedom um it really focuses on um free and even you know the designation freeze and freedom it's it doesn't really get the autonomy aspect into uh you know consciousness of a lot of people who listen to the rhetoric and you know on the core of everything this is you know this is what it's all about it's about individual autonomy it's you know it's not like a coke versus pepsi argument where like i'm saying linux is better and this is better because i have ego invested in it and this is the way i like to do things and it's like i'm i'm saying 
people should do this because these are the only options that are actually countermeasures. And if you want to have any impact at all counter-economically against this growing technological dystopia, then you have to use your market pressure and support the, the systems that are trying to be built that can be used in place of that. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, that is really the, the core of it all is that it's all about autonomy. Um, these systems you actually own, you own the software, you own the hardware, you are the arbiter of who does what with it. Um, that can't be said for anything you buy on Amazon or Best Buy or directly from Dell or whatever, right? Like there are many, many elements to that that you don't have the autonomy over, you don't have the control over. I mean, you can't just go buy a degoogled smartphone. Like the industry refuses to really make that a thing on a mass scale. There are lots of people like me, I'm far from the only person selling degoogled phones. Um, yeah, there one. are many, many people, yeah. Um, but, you know, even with all the popularity, even with all the people doing it, there really isn't like a company that is putting out flagship phones, that is putting out new devices that is giving anybody any of these options. Like all these products are products that the, basically that the industry refuses to make and they refuse to make them this way because this way empowers the users over their products and not the products over the users. And I mean, that's as clear as I can break it down. Like these, products are empowered to be used against you unless you can actually own them and owning them meaning in a in the sense of being the exclusive um, entity that controls the device like it doesn't mean that you have it in your pocket it doesn't mean that you're the one that paid the bill it means that you control what goes on on it um, and for the most part, a lot of this is opt-in. You know, people click the user agreement and do the thing, but the industry has kept these alternatives away from people. So they think it's futile to resist it. So they don't, you know, understand the alternatives existing. And really the people providing the alternatives are not good at marketing. That's not what they do. That's not what I do. You know, like I'm completely lost in trying to explain you know, I'm pretty much all logic and, um, you know, what works. Yeah. I'm not real. you know, it's hard for me to soften it to, you know, why people should care if they don't already, you know, like I've cared for a very long time. Like, it's funny. I look through some like old documents and stuff and, you know, I was into the EFF in like 2000. So, you know, this has been an, all my adult life, I've been trying to raise, raise awareness and I forecasted pretty much everything that has gone on so far. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff I said that was going to go on in the future is already going on, just not here. So um, I'm just doing what I can to kind of uh, stem the tide of all that. I mean, these are kind of like underground industry standards that the industry just really isn't a fan of. You know, um, so I mean, that's what the ghost router is. It's a high quality um, gigabit Ethernet ports. Um, I forget the exact uh, wireless speed, but it's a, um, oh, it's an Archer C7 is the model that I ended up using because it's the one that is real popular for other people doing this. Mm. So it gets a lot of, uh, a lot of shakedowns and a lot of support. Um, but it's no different than anybody else's DDWRT router. Um, it's just, I did it. <laughs> yeah. I put it on there. 
Um, so I, I think that's that's, so, that's, that's another that's another selling point too. So I guess the and, and it's selling point. Um, what we're kind of doing, and, and you're right about this. I've noticed noticed with the open source projects, like there's incredible fucking projects out there, but no one knows about them. So like what we're well like what you're doing with the ghost system, what I'm trying to do, what I like I kind of see, or maybe hopefully this, or maybe this is what you're trying to do or not, but it's a way to market and make these like it's a way to market and make and actually get these things into people's hands, um, whether they whether they build them exactly. themselves or whether they go with um, these systems. It's a way to think about it. It's just as much education as it is trying to um, you know get people to actually get these in their hands. Um, and obviously, and honestly, Jamin, um, maybe like for the hardcore folks, like. Maybe I'd maybe I'd just recommend them go ahead and do it themselves. They might enjoy it, and and, and maybe maybe they're better suited for that. But yeah, for a lot of sure. folks, for a lot of folks, um, for me, like the ghost phone, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Um, I've heard it's not that hard to you know flash a flash a pixel with, um, you know, with Calyx or whatever. But I haven't done it. Um, I just house first that to you. So um, I'm one of those folks. Um, thanks, thanks for